What? These two rolls of sushi cost $50 in San Francisco? Welcome to the Crazy Koala with the K. I've lived in San Francisco Bay Area for six years, a little bit longer than Singapore, where I've lived mostly the recent five and a half years. Although San Francisco and Singapore are two of the most well-known cities in the world, they are very different in many ways. So let's talk about them today. If you want to see more videos on my experiences in Singapore, US and the world, this is the best channel for you. So don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell button. My first impression. When I first moved to San Francisco, to be honest, I didn't enjoy it as much as other people who love outdoor activities because it's too different from New York City where I moved from. San Francisco is not really a city compared to New York City. I can't go to see Broadway shows. All my best friends are in New York City. But now, after many years, if I were to pick a city to live in within the United States, San Francisco Bay Area is probably my number one choice. And the same story goes to Singapore. When I first visited Singapore, I honestly didn't have much feeling about it because I was not used to the Hakka Center food in Singapore. Maybe it's hygienic, but I had really bad diarrhea, so it wasn't a good experience for me. But later, when I moved to Singapore, how the taxi drivers really went out of their way to help me and how authentic the people are really touched my heart. Eventually, I fell in love with it. So for both cities, it wasn't love at first sight. It was more gradually build up my emotions and feelings over time. Second is lifestyle. Lifestyle is significantly different between Singapore and San Francisco. So in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, most of the people, they go back home after work and they spend most of their personal time with family. People tend to separate their work from their personal life, though you may have some happy hours in the city. But people in Silicon Valley, which is the south of San Francisco city, just go home straight. So it's great if you like to spend more time with family. And it's much harder to meet up in San Francisco Bay Area because it's much more spread out. And you have San Francisco South Bay, which is like Silicon Valley, San Jose, Palo Alto. So it's not everything together in one city. For example, from San Jose, if you try to catch a happy hour in San Francisco after work, from San Jose driving to San Francisco, you may need to spend two hours on the road stuck in the traffic. So the round trip can be like four hours total. And if there's no traffic, you still need to spend more than an hour driving on the road. For example, myself, I probably only meet the people I know like once a year because nobody really bothers to drive so far to meet up. And most of the things are shut down after 8 p.m. So on the weekend, my activities are always just like grocery shopping and going for hiking in the mountains because there are a lot of mountains and trails nearby. If you like outdoor activities, you'll like living in the Bay Area. In Singapore, it's a totally different story. Everything is much more efficient and you don't need to drive. You can take a train or a taxi. For most of the places, you can access within half an hour just to meet up with friends unless you live at the border. I just found it saves me a lot of time in commuting, so it motivates me to meet up more with people or else I would have been just staying home all day otherwise. However, some people who lived in Hong Kong before think that Singapore is a good place for family but boring for single people. Hong Kong is a completely different animal and very different lifestyle from Singapore. I personally found Singapore is a good balance of single life and family life. Cost of living San Francisco Bay Area cost of living has become insane. By no means I can retire in the Bay Area. In general, most of the price tags are three times of what you're paying in Singapore and sometimes can be 10 times. Here I'm talking about necessities such as food, house rental, and public transportation. So these two rolls of sushi cost me $50, just like that. There's an economic report that shows that although the US inflation rate is just 1-2%, to 2 the inflation in the top 10 cities are actually ranging from 8% to 13%. In other words, the inflation in San Francisco is pretty insane. I remember when I first moved to the Bay Area, a bread cost me like 80 cents. Until now, it cost me like $2.2. That's like three folds over a decade. I always ask myself like, what kind of crazy role I'm living in now? 
In Singapore, although there are some specific things that are expensive, such as buying a private condo or landed house, a car, expect lifestyle kind of things like drinking in a bar or personal trainer in a gym, things that are considered as the next level of living quality. But if you go for the most basic stuff like what the locals are doing, you will not find it expensive at all. I elaborated more on the exact cost of living in my previous video that you can take a look. You see the difference between San Francisco and Singapore is that in Singapore, you can have a choice to live cheaper, but in San Francisco, you don't really have a choice because all the food costs the same anywhere. And for housing, yeah, you can say that you can rent a cheaper rent in some neighborhood, but then there will be a safety concern, which brings me to my next topic, which is that neighborhoods matter. There are differences on neighborhoods both in San Francisco and Singapore, but in San Francisco Bay Area, the neighborhoods matter a lot more. For example, because it's related to safety. If you live in a cheaper neighborhood, you don't know when your house will be broken in or when you will hear gun shooting nearby. There have been a lot of homeless people and increasing amount of crimes. Some neighborhoods are just much more dangerous than the others. You need to make sure that you hang out in the right place. It's not like in Singapore though, some people may find Geylang is a red light district, but it's nothing like the extreme that you can find in the US, such as in San Francisco or New York City. There are so many things to consider when it comes to where to live, and these are the aspects that are important to myself. I personally love living in Singapore more, but we all have different preferences and habits growing up. What I like may not be what you like. So the most important thing is to find what fits your lifestyle, your budget, your health condition, and most importantly, what matters to you in life. So do share with me at the comment section below and also comments below on what you want to see on my channel. A personal update if you missed that. I started hiring a video editor to help me with the video editing because it takes me a lot of time to do my video, like 50 hours per video. I need to spend a lot of time on idea generation, scripting, filming, editing, looking for footage, and then a thumbnail cover. You guys already support me a lot. But if you want to chip in to support my channel further, I set up a PayPal link where you can help me with the equipment upgrades and editor hiring, or you can join my Patreon page with extra benefits in my exclusive community by contributing as low as $3. So that's all for today. Until next week.